weekend long and we're looking forward to joining you here for the rest of our water ski and wakeboarding action. We are going to hand it over to our women's jump. We do have our seed two coming up next. A quick course change before that. So sit back, relax, enjoy the uh, mountain. The uh, Dublin uh, life here on the Yarra River and uh, well enjoy an incredible afternoon of water skiing action. We've got our uh, women's jump coming up next. Thanks for joining us once again for the wakeboarding action and we will see you all here tomorrow for our pro women. And just like that, we've got one, two, three, four, there, four, 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 Unfortunately, 
Similar spot to the first couple, so the first couple are 32.7 and 32.4. Christy Appleton uh, still has the lead with 34 metres. Very consistent jumping. I'm not sure how many are in the second D in seed one, uh, it's like series one. Uh, are you aware of that? Oh, ladies are in seed Actually, there's one. only uh, four, I believe, in seed one tomorrow. Okay, so everybody will go through at the same time. Yeah, I believe so. We've uh, also lost a couple of uh, couple of jumpers just uh, on the eve of this tournament. Uh, two or three jumpers. So I believe uh, all women jumpers will be through to the semi-final. Because tomorrow night's uh, seed one jump will feature the great uh, Cynthia Carroll. She'll be last off there and uh, hoping to get a big jump in. And uh, Rocky McBad is back up. We have female Hillary, so you've been doing what you've been doing. Super stoked that Hillary's going to make her way back uh, to her home province of Canterbury in the South Island for our national champs in a week or so because uh, yeah. she's the first of the jumpers in this uh, in this elimination round. We've got 54 kilometers per hour. So in theory, as long as she can handle that extra speed, it'll give her a little bit more distance. Also, Glenn, we, uh, I don't think we have a third distance for Lara Butler as yet. No, I don't think we do. 32-4 I didn't hear anything come through. Okay, Hilary Munro, here she comes, the Kiwi. Let's see what she can do in her opening jump. Jump number one, comes into the base of the ramp. Plenty of speed, but doesn't really match it with the lift that uh, I think she'd be looking for. But uh, she can have a bit of a look at the course and the feel of the site and, uh, of course, they say that every jump you take on the Yarrow, the conditions can be just a little bit different, but yeah, the conditions look absolutely glorious there at the moment. Yeah, that's up to the, around the 30 metre mark. She was pretty early out there to say, Rob, but just feeling things out. First jump on the Yarrow, 28.8, first jump on the Yarrow, so she was just getting over the ramp, trying to get some timing sorted out. She, she wasn't late enough, there's too much speed into the bottom ramp, which is able to generate any, any pull or lift or pop. So, just very much a warm up jump for Hillary. Hillary Munro jump number, jump number two. Very much a, a feel out the conditions here on the Yarra on jump number one, 28.8. This is pulled out wide, it's just recorded, can't hear on the uh, Tipco boat, out towards Alexander Park Gardens, which is slowly building as the afternoon goes on. Into the ramp she comes, she's going to have to get over the ramp now, she's going to have to get over the ramp now, and into the ramp she comes. That's some more speed and better lift, and that's uh, further jump. It's going to probably be around the 34 metre mark, I believe. Not quite, maybe 33. We'll just start. Wait and see, but it's, it's good to get some scores on the board here. But he doesn't really get the lift that he needed. We could use that term, sort of, uh, blame if you would agree, uh, or not, line drive, sort of a thing. Yeah, yeah, I, I agree. Of speed. He just didn't get the lift and push himself into that extra height that he needed. But uh, that same cut, it's an extra lift on the last jump. He's actually not getting super wide either. He's, uh, 
He's a fairly narrow uh, three-quarter out there, but he's still on. 48.7 Robs, no, uh, no small jump, that's a decent jump, the biggest jump of this tournament so far. Well then, you could be the So, based on that, I would say, yeah, uh, the uh, looks for me, I don't know if this is He looks to me like a guy that can jump in I think uh, he's just building into his he's definitely put the ticket in the decision fight on Sunday. So, yeah, so we're, as we're discussing around this 50 litre mark now, watching the US, it's from three weeks ago. And uh, he uh, put his speed up to his personal best at that stage was 457. He put his speed up to physical K I think it's 47.5. And that uh, that one in the overall, the open actually, large screen uh, the legend of New Zealand water speed was leading the overall up at that point. But that, uh, that little mark of putting the speed up by Jack has got in the overall title that he's on open. He has had some experience with the book, but not a lot. but he's not happy with where he was in the picture there. His uh, approach into the bottom right-hand corner probably thought he was just a little bit late and uh, not 100% confident of making it onto the, the ramp. The big DeWalt powered uh, Nautique uh, opened up on him a little bit there at 54K, I think, and uh, he was trying to let that one go. To me, he actually looked kind of hurt on slightly on the early side, actually. Yeah, the big Nautique, the ski Nautique said, Want to jump at 54? Welcome to the big time, son. Big time, mate. Yeah, exactly. Because I know at the New Zealand Open, uh, when we jumped, it didn't have the big engine in the uh, in the boat. So uh, there were only a few more horsepower throwing around. I have just had a text uh, by, from one of New Zealand's best uh, boat drivers, though, trying to meet that uh, Jack had a training set. All right, here comes Jack Silver, the Kiwi, his second jump. This time he hits the ramp and gets up and over and... Ooh, I don't think it's going to be 47. No, no it's not. It's uh, not the big big jump he was looking for. Probably didn't really hold his direction through the ramp that much. So uh, it's a score on the board, but uh, not quite the distance he was looking for. Yeah, because chasing 47.3, I think, you know, it's probably might be uh, lucky to be 45 but uh, he's got another jump to uh, push it up oh 41 five but we knew it wasn't great so. jump number two again back live on the river this looks like a good spot from jack he's got plenty of speed up he goes there you go jack silver with a big jump really big jump uh, on jump number two if you missed it folks you've got a re-ride on jump two that was it so but there we go jack uh, with a big jump up in the high 40s i think bill glenn that was really more of the form and the style and, and the look of how we've seen jack jump over the last couple of days so uh, maybe it just took a little bit of settling into the uh, 54Ks. However, obviously that... 48 is five. Yeah, new PB. New PB for Jack Silver. Is it 54K, of course? So you can find Callum Ashcroft, 54K. Callum Ashcroft from Australia. Five foot six, 
ramp in 6.5 as we mentioned. And then they changed the height of the ramp because um, later on our higher, higher seat works were jumping at 1.8 or 6 feet. The length of the ramp stays the same, but the, the uh, height is raised so the ramp actually becomes steeper. So it's much harder to negotiate, even though it can give you a much uh, greater distance. It is uh, much harder to negotiate the six foot ramp over say five foot six or five foot because of the stick. Well, they call them the Ashcroft, but uh, five foot six ramp height as to all our uh, guys here this afternoon. And, uh, that cutoff is still 47.3 is on the bubble. Well, if you look at Ben Post with uh, jumping at 47.3, Callum is uh, a higher ranked skier than uh, Ben as far as the seedings go, so obviously definitely high 40s is not going to be Okay, Callum has the log in his out loud. Push is here. Plenty of speed. Push us hard on that right ski. Nice ramp form. Oh, and a beautiful nice landing, and uh, well, I think that's up around that uh, 48 metre yeah, mark. Similar to Jack's, uh, Jack Silver's landing zone, so he's going to be uh, into the semi final. Great jumping from uh, this young Aussie, he's 18 years of age, as you say, from Wagga Wagga in uh, Cup Street, New South Wales. Ah, so 46.6, I thought that was pretty good ball. So he's not into the semi-final yet because uh, the Mark II is 47.3 and obviously 46.6 is less than 47.3 so he's not sure at the moment. You know, yeah, that, 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 uh, I mean, typically your first jump is traditionally not the longest. I mean, it certainly can be, but um, generally um, it sort of feels a lot on the way. We've got Colin Ashcroft from the wall with two jumps to come. He's got 40 to that in front. The synthetic kids of Chile uh, and then of course the North Queensland up Ryan Shark. It is Kelly Ashcroft, jump number two. That should be further, I think. I think we've got another metre or so there, uh, Rob. That looks like he's done enough. We'll wait, of course. I've been struggling a bit on my picking the distances, so I'm not going to speak too soon. No, but I'm not enough here. Not it's got to be here. Okay, it's the, be words come, the words come from the crowd below me that it's not going to be enough uh, to get him through the semi final. I think we might wait for the official distance. I was thinking that um, it was had to be just a little further than his uh, first jump. Well, 48.7 is enough. He's through. So uh, to the point of the crowd, if you think that I was wrong, that wasn't enough. Could you teach it to him that you've been doing this for years? Exactly. It's not my first one. Yeah, I've heard about yesterday. And you can see the left one's hardly doing anything, so he's really pushes it hard to the uh, base of that one. He's come that strike and see if he's going to his third. And this will be his final approach. Nice and wide, this looks like a good place to start. Pushes in once again, nice and hard. A little bit of an... Oh! Oh, oh how about oh. that one, Rob? That's going to be over 50. That's an absolute barn burn. Well, look, I thought he's had a tiny bit of upper body crush, but it must have just been his body just pushing against the impact. The speed that he had, that's got to be longer than the 48. Callum Ashcroft has just flown. He's just ejected himself off that Moomba jump ramp. And that's going to be our first 50 metre jump of the 2022 Moomba Masters. Let's wait and see. He's watching the scoreboard. He's thinking that's big. He wants to know how far, Melvin. 53.9 metres. Unbelievable stuff from Callum Ashcroft. Talk about Put it all together, that's an absolute ripper of a jump. 53.9 metres, he's absolutely as bad as down there. The scene, absolute scene, as Colin Ashcroft gets on the pickup break. 53.9, that is a massive jump for this young man, 18 years of age. All right, 53.9, 176 feet. Starting to get up there. Okay, cool. <laughs> 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 
Okay, Curry setting to now. This is fairly late. He's going to let it go. He's a bit late on that one. Now he's going to do right on the third. So he's still got two jumps to come after the first jump. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go away. I'm going to go away. Okay, so we've got young uh, Kellen Estrop. He's uh, just joined us. Mate, that's a good jump. He's going to be pretty happy with that. That was very great, man. So, uh, how do you think that heavy bit of spice in the BBC? So you TV before that was what, 48, 49, 49, 49 and a half. And since you got it all together, are you out there? Just uh, how does it feel? Okay. Long time time to get it. So did you put your the same speed and then you jump it? Put your speed up in? 54. Well, we've got a very happy young man here. The, uh, almost five with the TV. How are you talking? Oh, yeah, it's going to be Ashcroft from the Bush in Wagga Wagga and uh, Sydney. Yeah, up in Sydney. Here's Terry Shaddington and that's a bit of jump. I think, I think, that, I think that might be enough to get him through to the semi final. He's giving a little half pitch pump. He's happy enough to it. So maybe we need 47 to three. Well, I think he might have that on jump number two. Good jump, good jump, yep. the jump guy. Good Cosgrip still chewing the fingernails. Watch all his mates go out and uh, just just the, the clicks his uh, score and leaving on the bubble. to the side and that costs distance and uh, that's not going to be all that far that's only what do you think in the mid mid thirties or, or thereabouts well, if we could get uh, the webcast camera guys just to get a little shot on the grass and back in front of the commentary position here i don't know if we've got a camera out there but uh we've got our two ducks that have been playing havoc with this event uh, getting in the way of the skiers have just come for a little interview with us Well, just the wheelface to 29.5 metres. We're just waiting on a distance to come through on that jump. Okay, we're moving into the ski show. I'll double check on the starting time. We're just over time the ski show. We'll be having a the river will be open to traffic and then we'll be 
Uh, moving on to night slalom and then night jump. So that's our program for, to take us through till 10.30 this evening. Fireworks at nine o'clock, not to be missed. All right, we're going to bring on Ryan Shark. Oh, here we go. She's an up on the Team Shark will be, be on the edge of the six here now. Can he get up and over us a decent lift here? Yes, he does. Yes, he does. He flies. Oh, and that's could he, that could be 55 or even 56 metres. That is an absolute ripper. I might be talking it up a bit, uh, Rob, as I do, but uh, that looks to me further than the 54 metre efforts you what, we've had. Welcome to round two, Ryan Sharka. Wow, we'll talk about leave it to the last. I'm sure his uh, sponsors, AK Mum and Dad, will be happy to see that one, but uh, he certainly made him uh, stress out a little bit for a little while, didn't he? Let's wait for the distance. Ryan Sharka has absolutely smashed one out here, right out of the park. 54.5, nice jump, Ryan Sharker. Biggest jump of C2. What a great event we've had here, folks. Unfortunately, Benny Cosgriff uh, has uh, possibly missed out uh, on this semi-final, which will run Sunday. Folks, don't go away. I've enjoyed this commentary with Rob Wing. We'll be here uh, all night, but we're gonna have a bit of a quick ski show. Quick ski show. Uh, display here and then of course uh, we have a bit of a river opening and then we come back with the night slalom. So there's action on the water now right through till probably close to 11 I think tonight. <laughs>
And two up to Rupert Chase, give it a big round of applause. Seven. Behind that super air Nordic, we got the best tow boat in the world. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the water, our ballet team. And as they take up on the water, those costumes glisten in the sunshine. What a perfect evening we've got here this evening. Plenty of great water skiing after show. Of course, there's fireworks every night at Moomba. If you're a water skier and you'd like to get involved in show skiing, go onto the Moomba Masters website and you'll see a link to our show. And we can get in touch with you and let you know when we have a come and try day. Just like a number of skiers getting this evening, they were just like you on the banks saying, gee, I'd love to do this. There's no bigger thrill in water skiing than skiing on this magnificent amphitheater with the city in the background. Let's sit back, listen to music, and look at the precision skiing of the ballet team. Around the boat. The scale of the water boat, Nelson, he's going to attempt to see 
Benny Cosgrove. So pretty soon our, uh, our American uh, fellow that we saw earlier today, Fletcher Holm, will be uh, on the water. Oh, so I guess we're we'll talking about all this, these sports that are Absolutely. Because cricket, there's men's and women's cricket on. It's, it's almost as if the Boomba Masters in Melbourne, it's like the sun. And all these other sports are just planets and satellites revolving around. Very this deep, weekend. Robert. Very deep. This Fletcher, first of all, welcome to Australia. Thank you. So we saw you skiing uh, earlier today, obviously a bit disappointed tonight, but uh, what's your first impression? You probably hate it. Nice slalom. Nice, good. I like the blue sights. I mean, it's awesome to be out here. Uh, skiing goes over. It's a fun 
Well, seeing it's your first trip to Moomba, have a good one. Best of luck over the weekend. And uh, once again, uh, welcome and good to see you here. And uh, didn't probably go as well as either of you guys wanted to, but uh, it's great to see you out on the water. Just quickly, I've got Nate Smith uh, driving the, uh, so the world record, Slalom record holder. What sort of money are they paying you to drive the pickup though? Uh, I don't think you do. Yes, we do. Yes, that's it. Here we go. I'm not sure we're a photo. jump here so we're going to keep moving on we're going to run right into night jump at 9 15. 9 30 is the fireworks so uh 
probably about the time our second jumper is out there. Maybe a third. We should have the first night of fireworks for the Moomba Festival. For 2022, kicking it off in the city of Melbourne, the big city. A beautiful Friday evening. A little bit cool, but it's still not stopping the fans from getting out of here. Here comes the skiing or teak tow boat underneath the Swan Street Bridge. Ben she, 13 metre rope length. See if we can get six boys and have a crack at the 12 and crack the lead. It's pretty important as to how he runs his 13. We've got a good start around boy one. Now he gets to three, he's waiting for three. So far so good, he's looking pretty good on his 13 metre pass, Glenn. Turns around five, I think he's gonna do it. Well, the boys say they can't see too much out there, but they're certainly running the slalom course pretty well. It's, they could do it with their eyes closed. Yeah, absolutely. Pretty simple 13 metre line there for uh, Ben Shahi. He's back in on the 12. Remember our lead is five. Mitch Barber has five at 12. So anything more than five on this pass could take the lead in this event. 12 metre line back from the city end. He needs more than five to take the win. And he's off around two balls. Fell an effort, but put your hands together, Melbourne. Great effort from the young Queenslander. One and a half on the 12 metre line out there in the dark. So, uh, Nate Smith and uh, Frederica Jaramillo uh, streaming down the lake there to uh, pick up the skier. You know when you go to those water ski tournaments and you've got glass cut conditions and you've got some new guy at the pickup boat who doesn't really know what he's doing and he takes off fast and makes rolling for the next skier and the people on the ground bank are yelling out, Whoa, slow down at the pickup boat. Well, nobody's doing that to Nathan. Like Fourteen to five. So, Corey Saddington going for the win, Glenn. Back himself in, starting at 14. Give himself the opportunity to get on 11. Fourteen, probably a pretty tough ask.
Thank you. 